radio TV phono nut and what we have here is a Heathkit IT 5283 battery powered transistorized signal tracer this is a lightweight plastic cased no frills model that does get the job done in a lot of instances these were made from about 1977 up until the early 90s when Heathkit got out of the business uh, of course I don't know exactly when this was built yet uh, on the front it's very simple we have our speaker we have our selector switch for off and speaker substitution that's where you can have the actual instrument turned off and plug a cable into this speaker these two speaker jacks here and a uh, substitute for a possible defective speaker in the item under test and then we have a signal tracer position which we set it to that position and power the instrument on and then we plug our probe into this input jack and I'll show you the probe in just a minute and then that allows us to inject RF and AF signals into the signal tracer where they are amplified and heard over the loudspeaker inside of the signal tracer and then we have another position which is really not that useful audible volts and ohms uh, I believe that position is used for checking resistance in the uh, and the faster the tone you hear the higher the resistance or voltage but that feature is really not that useful to us you know we can use a standard digital multimeter and get a whole lot more accurate uh, representation of that so about the only thing we'll be using is the signal tracer function and maybe the speaker sub function. As you can see, we have our carry handle here. And on the back, we have a compartment for probe storage. And this probe was did not come with a signal tracer. I ordered this probe off of eBay from a gentleman who makes these. Uh, you might look at them and say they're a bit pricey, but the way I look at it is by the time I ordered all the things I needed to make this probe, I'd have probably ended up spending just as much money, and it probably wouldn't have looked as neat as the one I got from the gentleman on eBay. So I happily paid the 40 something dollars to get this and have something that's professionally done and ready to go. Now, looking at the probe, we have our banana jack to BNC adapter and then we have our shielded coax cable and this is our ground lead here and then we have two probes here the red is for audio and the black probe which contains a 1N34A diode and a capacitor uh, that's for our RF okay here's the inside of the signal tracer and as the brand implies, Heath Kit, this was built as a kit. And as you can tell, really not much to this. Uh, and we run off of a couple of 9 volt batteries. This, this plate back here is a cover plate, a dummy plate. If you were to buy the external power supply that was designed to power this signal tracer, as well as the several other pieces of uh, test equipment that was in this series including an RF signal generator which we also have a multimeter and an audio signal generator and I think a couple other things you could install the plate back here that had the correct Molex plug for the power supply to plug into but obviously whoever built this opted not to go for the power supply option all right, let's pull this out of the case and see what the underside looks like. Did they do a good job building this, or was it a slop job? Okay, looking at the underside, it looks to be pretty well built here, and that's a good sign. Nothing worse than going behind a sloppy kit builder and having to correct all of their mistakes. Okay, while I had it apart, I just went ahead and sprayed some cleaner in the function switch and the level control. And I found a late 1986 date code on the potentiometer, so this thing was probably built in 
late 86, early 87. So now let's put it back together and slap some batteries in it and see what happens. There's really not a whole lot to go wrong with these, so it'll probably just work. And on the subject of batteries, I was in China Mart a while back. I was going to pick up a pack of 9 volt batteries until I saw where they wanted something like 14 bucks for a, for a package of two uh, Duracell and then I think they also had Energizer batteries and I said no way I'll go to the dollar store and get some well then I went to the dollar store and the dollar store batteries that they had that I used to buy for under a dollar a piece were now something like 382 for uh, one battery and I said nope I think I can order them cheaper than that so I got on eBay and ordered these you know five of them for under ten bucks and I'm sure these are not as good a quality as uh, some of the name brands but you know it'll do fine for what we want to use and of course we have to get that made in China wording which you're pretty much going to see that on all of them these days Okay, the batteries are installed and they produce a healthy 9.8 volts unloaded. All right, let's turn it on and see what happens. Getting a hiss from the speaker, so that's a good sign. And the hiss varies with the level control. On this BNC adapter, you'll notice the little notch on the side here the protrusion that's our ground so we orient that side to where we plug it into the black jack on the uh, signal tracer so you know I was wondering why I wasn't getting any signal and, it, and I just noticed you know if I plug my input cable into the correct jack it might work a lot better and as you can tell when I touch the AF probe we're passing a signal As far as I'm concerned, the signal tracer is working, and I think we can put it back together and run run through some applications with it. Okay, we have this True Tone farm radio that I overhauled a while back, got it working, and then turned it on one day and no sound. And then I discovered that the voice call on the original speaker had opened. The problem is somewhere right in here. And I tried to fix it and ended up making it worse. So I'm going to end up just replacing the speaker. I'm not fooling with it. But right now we have it connected to this old 6x9 speaker. And we're going to connect it to the speaker and the signal tracer and see what happens. So we have our signal tracer selector switch set to off slash external speaker. Our speaker sub rather. And here we go. And as you can hear, we have sound coming out of the signal tracer speaker that's, of course, dependent on the radio's volume control. You can use your Medicare approved doctor, you get prescription savings, dental and vision savings. Very worth looking into. Alright, now what I want to do is pull the chassis from the radio and do some signal tracing, but I think we better hold off on that because as you can tell, it's looking like the bottom's fixing to fall out, and I don't want that to happen while I'm out here trying to work on this. So we're going to call it a day and let whatever the sky is going to do do its thing, and then we'll get back into this. Alright, I'm going to touch the AF probe to the grid cap of the first audio and detector tube since this is already detected audio here. And these new my sandals, these are flip And as you can hear, we have audio in the speaker. Now let's take the audio probe, see if I can get in here. Okay, is that loading down my circuit? Alright, we're getting some issues here. All I have to do is ground the generator to the chassis, and we're getting some RF through here, but whenever I touch my RF probe to the grid cap of the IF tube, it loads it down and kills it all together, but we're going to have to stop right here because the bottom's fixing to fall out, and I'm not going to get caught in the rain. Okay, while we're waiting on the bottom to fall out, we can talk about some advantages to a little signal tracer like this. 
Uh, one of the advantages this is this is a lightweight battery powered model which means if I decide to use it outdoors where I may not have access to a jillion electrical outlets I can do so and also also I uh, since this is battery powered we won't have to worry about issues with isolating the radio from the uh, power line in the case of hot chassis sets so yeah that's the two main advantages of something like this even though the older tube type generators like I've got generators signal tracers not generators we'll talk about generators later but today we're talking about signal tracers but the the older tube type signal tracers are obviously built a lot better or a lot heavier duty and have more frills than this thing does for example some of the better tube type signal tracers will not only have a speaker substitution capability they will also have an audio output transformer substitution capability whereas if you suspect the audio output transformer in your radio or amplifier or whatever is defective you know you can test it with the transformer built into the signal tracer although that's not a feature I'll use much because generally speaking I can ohm out an audio output transformer and tell if it's good or not uh, another feature that some of the better signal tracers have is a noise function whereas if you have a noisy component such as an old carbon composition resistor you can use that feature to actually hear the noise that's being produced by the suspected component and some signal tracers not only do they give you an oral indication of the signal they also give you a visual indication of the signal by means of a green magic eye tube or a meter but like I said this one here is just as about as basic as it gets it's a no frills signal tracer but can be used to accomplish basic troubleshooting needs such as finding a dead stage in a radio etc which is something we'll try to demonstrate uh, whenever the sky does what it's going to do now that's one way to guarantee that it's going to rain is if there's a 10 percent chance and you get involved with some outdoor project then you can bump that rain chance up to a hundred percent chance because it's going to rain on you however if you decide not to engage in that project on that particular day because of the ten percent chance of rain then the sun will be out all day and it won't rain a drop and that's just that's just the way it is but as far as i'm concerned the signal tracer itself is working fine i am a bit concerned about up there a few minutes ago when I grounded my probe to the uh, to the chassis I was hearing RF the radio station being received through the speaker and whenever I touched my RF probe to the grid cap of the mixer tube and the IF amplifier tube it it killed everything it killed the reception being received by the radio as well as nothing came out of the signal tracer so we're going to have to look into that uh, I'm thinking that battery operated set the chassis might be filament ground and then there there's a B minus bus inside of the radio so we may have to clip on to the B minus bus in order to get around this problem but we'll figure out all that later you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with the signal tracer. I don't think there's anything wrong with the the probe he sent. I just think it's a nature of just the way this radio is set up. But when the sun comes back out and there's no chance of getting moist out here, then we'll look into that. Okay, this is the weirdest crap. I have the probes completely disconnected from the signal tracer. I have the speaker disconnected from the radio to keep it out of the equation and I'm hearing the radio station that we're tuned into on the radio on the signal tracer and what I hear on the signal tracer varies with the volume control setting of the radio
So that is very weird. Now I tried changing the ground connections and that's not that's not doing anything for us. Okay, I opened everything up as you can see and ESR tested all of the capacitors and they seem okay. Although that uh, problem we're having doesn't really seem like a cap issue, it seems like a shielding issue. And I saw on a video about one of these tracers that some of these came with a shield and some of them didn't. Apparently this is one of the ones that didn't or else one was never installed on it. Okay, it looks like we have a ground on one of these uh, shielded cables that's not connected. Let's see where it goes. Now, one thing I've discovered is the shield ground on this cable here that comes from the selector switch has 9 volts on it. Now, I don't know whether that's correct or not. I really need to dig up a manual on this and see how it's supposed to be wired. But it's quite possible that someone made a wiring error when they built this. Oh, well, here's something they forgot to solder. The speaker leads. They just wrapped them around there and failed to solder them. I guess they were in a hurry to get finished with this. Not that that would cause our current problem, but we might as well go ahead and solder them in place. Okay, not one effort to solder those wires in place. Now, if they were that careless, then uh, there's, in, there's, there's a possibility that they made other mistakes. So we're probably going to have to get the manual for this and look through it and see if I can find anything. Alright, that's better. Okay, I found another problem. When the switch is set to off slash speaker test, our shield ground here should go to the chassis. It doesn't. They have it reversed with the center conductor, the hot lead here as you can see on the ohm meter so I'm just going to simply unsolder these here and reverse these and put that back right. Alright I'm not having any luck here. I removed this shield ground on the input lead to the circuit board which had 9 volts riding on it. I removed that and grounded it and ran a separate lead from the switch over to the point on the board where the 9 volts is supposed to go in. That made absolutely no difference so I put it back like it was, as well as reverse the speaker back lead back like it was. At least that way there's less chance of that exposed ground lead, shield lead, shorting out to something. So, short of a have finding a manual for this, I don't know what to do. That's going to be my next step. Try to find a manual, and if I can't find a manual, then I'm lost. You know, this thing works fine as an audio amplifier, but it's not working worth a damn for a RF use. Okay, here's the RF signal generator that I have. It's part of this series. And as you can tell, someone removed the 9 volt battery snaps and wired in a couple of banana jacks back here for, the, for an external power supply. Well, for right now, we're going to undo all of that and put some snap connectors back in here so I can run this off of batteries and then I want to see if I can pick up any output from this generator with this signal tracer. Well the signal generator seems to be working. I have it set to 650 and I'm being able to pick it up by the radio here. And we have the signal generator connected to the signal tracer and I'm hearing the signal via the RF probe here. And when I clip it to the AF probe, I get virtually nothing. So that proves that the RF probe is doing its job. But for some reason, it's not happy with a radio. When tracing through a radio, we may have to design a probe like the original to have only one test lead with a switch and the probe to switch between RF and AF. Okay, I went and dug out another radio. This is a little solid state AC operated table radio. And we're going to open it up and probe around with a signal tracer and see if it'll pick up anything off of the radio. Or is it going to act stupid and load everything down to the point of no reception? Alright, I'm probing the detector diode. And as you can hear, we're getting audio passage, so... Alright, here we are at the base of what I presume is the first IF transistor. Nice. Very cool. 
and we have a low level signal and then when we move to the collector say that hard work pays off um, make a budget make a plan and we have a much higher level signal so this signal tracer is working but just for some reason it was not happy with that tube radio and that's a bummer because that's what I'm going to mostly be using this on okay this is a five tube Emerson hot chassis set one side of the line connected directly to the chassis now let's turn our signal tracer on and we'll touch the grid tap of the IF amplifier tube and see it just loads it down and you lose reception from the radio and you get nothing on the uh, signal tracer either. Okay, this, this signal tracer is so sensitive that I can hold the audio probe, or the RF probe too for that matter, up close to the audio output tube. And we're hearing a signal over the signal tracer. Your copy of Redefining Anxiety for Oh, well now it's going to work. Well, I wonder what's up with that. I guess we just weren't making very good contact with this old grid cap, but it's working. And I've got the volume on the radio turned down. Okay, so that's the signal coming out of the first IF transformer into the grid of the IF amplifier tube. And then when we go to the plate, it should be louder. We're there, but it's all garbled up. And you say, what, what immediately... Okay. Now I'm looking at the input well, of the detector tube, which is coming like out of the okay. second IF transformer, stock, one. The second and it's working is, correctly. Um, I'm not that sure that this company is... And you can see we have a much louder signal there. So that's what we want. Okay, it's getting about dark, so I can't do much more today. And this is about all I've got for the signal tracer anyway. Why the why it didn't like the battery radio, I don't know, but it is what it is. Now, as far as the signal generator, I don't think it needs much. The dial needs to be calibrated and I have the instruction book on that one and we'll go through the calibration procedure for that one day. But as far as I'm concerned, the signal tracer is working about as good as it's capable of working. And the signal generator, like I said, just needs some calibration and then it ought to be good to go. And then we'll have a couple of battery operated pieces of test equipment for outdoor radio repair. Now one thing to keep in mind if you happen to run across one of these signal tracers, there is not a power, power indicator lamp, so always remember to turn it off when you're done. Or else you might find that your batteries are dead when you need it, need it the next time.